All right, so mm. Q and A. This is a Q and A session. Q&A. So we've got a couple of things lined up that we can talk about, but we honestly want to hear from you about what you want to know. We thought let's spend the next hour having a bit of a chat and things like that, imparting some wisdom. Yeah. So, yeah, let us know. Ooh, Tom McCosker, know start wisdom. us off. <laughs> Are you guys releasing it as a single or an album? Um, that track will be on the album. So, at this stage, yeah, we're, that's, that's not going to be heard really again. I don't, yeah, we don't see it being heard again. That was kind of a little treat for this uh, inaugural live stream. But, no, that will be just held tight for the album, hopefully. We don't know. We're, we'll talk about the album later on, but you know that's one of the songs that we've got under our belt right now. We don't know if it's going to make the cut. We think it's really cool, but you know we've also got some really cool stuff working as well. So as you write songs, you know that's a year old now. As we're writing new stuff, things get pushed out potentially for the best material. So we'll see, we'll see. But we'll always hold on to it. So now on the album, the let's day, let's talk about the album. No, not yet. We're going to talk about the album. All right. Lot, Next question: uh, What inspired or made us go from drop C sharp or drop yeah drop C sharp to drop B? Oh, is that a me? That's thing, a good question. Who's, who's going to get on that? I don't yeah. play guitar, um, so you can answer it. <laughs> um, I guess we we did drop B on the first album on Awaken Within with the uh, with, it was in seven string though. So it was B standard. Um, and so, yeah, we just, well, yeah, sorry, that was B standard, yes. And um, just just playing around with stuff. To be honest, I was listening at the time to a lot of bands that were doing a lot of drop B stuff. And so just started riffing around in it. Um, we always kind of take the riffs and try them across the, our, you know, our home, which is drop C sharp, uh, and see what sounds, see if it fits there or if it suits being in drop B and the stuff that we're writing in drop B, which is about 50-50 on the record that we've got that we're working on. Just sounds better in drop B. It's just heavier. It's just, yeah, it just it just feels right on drop B. So that's kind of, yeah, where it's at. But I guess the inspiration comes from just listening to a lot of new, different music and drawing inspiration from different bands this time around. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we've been playing a, a, around a lot with tuning this time around. Um, like, whereas the last record was all about staying C sharp besides the B standard. Um, this time we're sort of playing around a lot more with drop B and we've actually been playing in more different tunings. Like we've, we've tried drop A sharp. I think it was a drop A. Um, it's not exactly for us, but it's still really fun to sort of branch out a little bit and just have a bit of fun and be creative. Because that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah, for sure. I just want to say some shout outs. G'day, Fiona. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Adam, thank you so much. Uh, Descent, we love playing Descent Live. Thank you. Um, and I've got to try and work out how to scroll up if I've missed anyone. But thank you, everyone, for saying hey and jumping in. Um, I guess a cool, fun fact about um, Sarah and Adrian is we met them over in Japan, which is kind of a cool, crazy kind of thing. It's just that, yeah, we're just... Um, playing and met Fuck yeah we did cool group of people, <laughs> Sarah and Adrian and yeah we just yeah, had a really good time with them we spent uh, you know a, a good portion of time with them and uh, over in Japan so yeah hey guys I uh, hope you're all well and good over there they're uh, over in the UK so I hope you guys are doing well G'day mate um, Brayden yeah Brayden you've got kind of the comments thing scrolling I what do have the kind of comments thing um, so the next question is why do you and I look like babies where are the ISO beards um, I shaved like 25 minutes before we started this and Matt can't grow facial hair. I can't grow facial hair. I'm just trying to grow this out, but I can't grow facial hair, but I could do this, but I can't grow facial hair. Yeah. Uh, next question. Got any gigs planned for Melbourne? Oh, I wish. Yeah. Man, I wish like, I, oh yeah, we wish man. We, we don't know what's going on. That's just, Part of one of the first, I guess, topics that we're going to talk about um, is being a musician or being in a band during these COVID times. Um, and, and that's one of the key things right now about it is that we don't know when we're going to get to gig again. Yeah. G'day, Michael. How are you, man? Good to see you. Um, yeah. Bring back live shows. We we want to play. We love playing for you guys, but we have no foreseeable... We have no idea when it's going to happen. Um, even myself that I do our bookings, I can't see a way and we don't want to commit to something that is going to 
fall over or potentially not going to happen. So, you know, you guys might have seen some of your favorite bands tours or every tour at the moment that's been canceled and rescheduled and being pushed out. As you know, we had Unearth planned as well. Uh, we're not going to commit and put it out there without having something in solid. We don't want to disappoint you guys. We don't want to put it out there and have to cancel over and over. We're going to play it safe and we're going to use this time constructively as much as we can to do the next record for you guys. So unfortunately, no Melbourne gigs planned. But as soon as we can, we'll let you know. Yeah, Which fucking sucks because um, like I'm packing on the weight because I'm not sweating my ass off on stage or anything. I just am I'm itching, itching to get back on the goddamn stage and just to see the people yeah. travel around because God, I'm so sick of my house at the moment. So <laughs> Yeah. Hey I, Campbell, how are you, man? I think um we that's, want, sorry, we want to play in Adelaide too. I think that's um that's a really good okay. point. Just we really want to get back out here and play, but with everything going on, I think the smartest thing that we can do at the moment is is to say stay safe and make that like keep that longevity going, so that when things finally open up again, we actually have something that we can come out with as well. I think that's really important. Yeah, and we can yeah. and we can actually tour it instead of doing one off shows here and there and waiting and not knowing what's going on. We want to come out with a bang. You know, we want to come out with a new album. We want to come out. We want to tour it as much as we can, mm. uh, and we want to time it right for you guys. We don't want to do it half ass anything kind of like that. So, yeah, we're. we're we're, we're not working. We're working on the album. We're just sitting tight as everyone is to wait when this is going to happen. Now, with, with um, the I think album, there was a couple of comments. questions. Yeah, a couple of comments about when the new album's going to come out and about it. Um, I guess we'll just talk about the new album now. Yeah, Because people seem to want to hear about it. So we'll circle back to the musician thing. Um, hey, Kelsey. We'll circle back to the musician thing. But um, the new album, once again... It, it's really coming down to everything that's going on. We know that we could release the record, um, you know, when it's ready, uh, in terms of when it is ready. We're about 70% of the way there. We have seven tracks completed. Um, so you heard Shadow Walker, which has been out for a year, and you've just heard Anima Mia, if you were uh, um, lucky enough to tune in or if you did tune in and hear that. So that's we've got another five. Uh, so we're working on the other three. Um, and those seven that we've got are actually recorded and ready to go. So they're not just written, they're recorded. Um, so the album's about 70%. So look, in terms of when it's going to come out, it's, it's obviously going to be a 2021 release. Um, I can't say, we can't say when, you know, we don't know if it's going to be first half or second half because we really want to do it um, at the right timing when we can release it and then tour it. So yeah, we're, we're holding on to it. If I could estimate and guess, I would say first half. Because if we don't, it would have been three years between records and it's getting a bit long and we want to get it out there. So, you know, fingers uh -huh. crossed. We're lucky enough to be in regional Victoria. So we can hopefully potentially get things done maybe a bit quicker in terms of finishing off the recording. Um, but we, we just don't know. But first half of 2021, new album. But we'll uh, we'll let you know as soon as we know. We're going to put it on vinyl uh, too. I think, this is a, I think this is a question here for Corey. Any tips on growing a moustache? <laughs> Push. Yeah. Push um, hard. Yeah, yeah push. <laughs> and uh, only, you can see I'm pasty white because I don't tan, but I just go out and I allow this bit to get in the sun because the sun helps your face <laughs> to grow. So I just block all this out and I just I just let the, the poisonous caterpillar sit there and rest in the sun. So a um, couple of really good questions here. Um, I'm just going to bring... It back up so from what i can assume generation wise members of the ascended are fans of the following bands you're like bullet for my valentine kill switch trivium avenge sevenfold so some of the questions are in regard to that so do we dig um bullet for my valentine post scream aim fire is the first part of that question um i'll do I'm just gonna quickly shout out to not this will um we'll hit you up regarding some merch we've got some stuff that we're we have got some extra large, uh, extra, extra large, I believe, of some of the stuff. So we'll hit you up or send us a message. Uh, we have got some stuff sitting there that we can get out to you. Um, okay, back to the question. Do we dig Bullet from a Valentine post Scream and Fire? Um, I do. Me personally? Yeah, yes, to an extent. So what mm. have we got? We've got Fever. Thumbs yeah. up. We've got Temper Temper. Thumbs down. Yeah, there, thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> got V or however you Venom. do it. That's a W. V. <laughs> five absolutely that is a throwback to like heavy bullet yeah. and then you've got gravity two thumbs down that's just me uh, personally so the answer is yes i do dig them 
there's a couple of songs on each of those records, even though I say thumbs down, that are good. Like even on Gravity, there's a couple of songs that are good, but overall, eh. I'm um, I'm not a fan of a massive fan of Bullet Post sort of um, Scream Aim Fire. I listen to a lot of the Poison, I listen to a lot of Scream Aim Fire, and then I sort of moved on to other bands and stuff. Corey, I'm I'm waiting for Tears Don't Fall number number twelve. I think that's going to be insane <laughs> <laughs> when that comes they've out. Got it, they've got it coming. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Should Howard Jones uh, return to Kill Switch? Is the next question. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Yep. Oh man, um, why not both of them? Why not both? You know, you, well, yeah, why not both? Like, I don't know, man. I listened to a, um, a podcast called The X Man with Doc Coyle from Bad Wolves. Really cool if you're a musician or if you're just into metal because he interviews a lot of um, like the top guys in the scene. Uh, and he had Jesse on, and they were talking about it and Jesse's journey. And yeah, I like it's it's so like should. Could, they could both fill the role. I just, you know, I think Kill Switch is different with each of them. They're a different beast. Um, hard to say. I, based on what I heard on this interview from Jesse, he wants to kind of take Kill Switch in a different direction. Um, so if you know Times of Grace, you know, Jesse and um, Adam's other side project, you'll get to hear kind of where Jesse wants to go. He's a bit more experimental. Howard, I think, is like balls to the wall metal. So I'll take them both. Like... If that was how Kill Switch worked for the next 10 years, they just interchange singers between records, I'll take them both. Hey, it's working for them. So. Yeah. Um, what are our thoughts on the new Trivium album? Even though they ripped off Drag oh. Me to Hell. Yes. Well, I mean, it's pretty... I can pretty biased in opinion, of course. Yeah, it's amazing. Good. Um, admittedly, I don't listen to it as much as I listen to a, a couple of other bands that I'm drawing a lot more inspiration from of late, but I'll still chuck it on, but... I mean, yeah, it's okay. It's hard to say. I'm, yeah, it's like the Trivia's okay. first four records are always going to be like bang, and then they're just going to do good albums in between. It's a good album. Yeah, it's a good album. Solid. Uh, it's so a solid album. Have we ever been made fun of or treated unequally due to listening to bands like Avenged Sevenfold? Um, as an elitist trend has forced said band to be known as cringe metal within certain okay. bands. Corey. I, I'll, 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 I'll come in on this one. Looking the way I look, I've certainly gotten picked on to a lot of a lot of bands that I listen to because they're like, oh yeah, are you oh are you one of those, you know? But no, I'm not, and I like all different types of music, so it doesn't really it doesn't really matter what you listen to. If you listen to heavy music, yeah. respect. It doesn't matter what band it is. If you listen to have something heavy, full respect, no matter which way you go. So, and if someone disrespects me, I don't care. And I, th and I think that's, that's really well yeah. reflected in like at download and when Soundwave ran. It's it's sort of like a, a party of fifty thousand of your best friends, except you've never met them, but you are all loving the same music. So, I think it's it's yeah. definitely a collaborative thing. Like, you know, yes, there are sort of those niche genres that people sort of stick to, um, and the trends that change. But on the whole, I think we're all in it. So. It sort of just gets yeah, shrugged I, off. I came into metal later in my life. Like I never, I didn't listen to metal in school. So I never, and that's, I guess, where you get a lot of your bullying from. I wasn't really into metal at school. Like the heaviest I was into when I was at school was like ACDC, maybe a bit of Metallica. I didn't find metal till later on after that. You clear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I'd found like my friendship group or found like my core friendship group. So like at that point as well, it's like no one really cares. So I never really got teased about it um and i think that the metal as we've said the metal community as a whole is kind of all accepting there are a few elitists as they're going to be in every kind of thing but overall never really really copped it um have we picked uh, up there's any... a lot of questions coming in yeah i'm, yeah, I'm expected so I'm, I'm, more... I'm working through so we're them trying to keep up with them as much as we can yeah i'm, I'm a bit um, behind i just want to yeah say a quick shout out yeah i'll say a quick shout out to everyone who is here thank you once again this is the first time we've done this we will probably do it again, um, given that it seems to be going pretty well. Um, so, yeah, look, thank you so much for joining us. We're trying to be connected to you as much as we can, letting you know that we are still a band. We are still here. We are still working away because I know that in this kind of time frame, a lot of people might be wondering what's happening to your favourite local bands. Not saying that, you know, we're by any means your favourite, but we are a local band that you obviously know. We are still doing stuff. Um, and yeah, and for those that have been asking about merch and stuff, um, yeah, send us a message. I see one come through just now. Thank you. We will get back to you. Um, we
We also have, I'm just going to do a bit of a plug. I don't know if you can see this. We also have face masks. They're only 10 bucks and they are adjustable. So if you want a face mask, if you need one, I think, I don't know if everyone needs one, wherever you are, we have face masks. So you can send us a message. Um, and yeah, let's do some more questions. Um, where was it? Um, have we learned any new skills or picked up any new hobbies while we've been in lockdown? Because I mean, in, here in Victoria, it's been up and down. So it's been all over the shop. I have been really, really busting my ass and picking up my family heritage language of Dutch. So I've been learning a lot of Dutch in my spare time. <laughs> I've been working. Very cool. Um, I've just, yeah, I've been working. In terms of, I guess, skills, um, which is another part of kind of looping back to the, some of these overarching topics about being a musician in lockdown is that I'm not afraid to admit that in some points and times, motivation has been pretty low um, as, as you can imagine it is to actually get on the instrument. We can't be in the same room. We're obviously doing this from separate rooms. I miss all these guys when being in the room together is when we're our most creative and having that flow on of knowing we've got practice every week and doing that kind of stuff is what keeps you motivated. So our motivation has been hard, but uh, shout out to Ryan Matheson from The Motion Below. I'm going to uh, talk about that. And if you don't know his band and their band, really, really cool stuff, check them out. Um, he's been doing a bit of like Metallica jamming on guitar solos. And we've kind of been doing a bit of trading back and forth. And so he's got my motivation up, even though it's not ascended stuff and, you know, it's not writing new stuff. It's been getting me on the guitar. And so, yeah, I've been doing a bit of that. And I guess it's increasing lead playing been trying to do some covers of Bodum stuff. So in terms of new skills and whatnot, I've never really done covers before. So I guess it's kind of new. I've never ever really sat down and learned other people's songs because I've always had to work on our stuff. Or, so Which is a really, really great um, oh, segue, talking about yeah. Motion Below and whatnot. Um, question, what other Aussie bands can we recommend? Is that a question? That is a question. Sure. Someone has, I guess we'll all have a bit of a crack. I'll go with some. You get five. Um, the Motion Below. Okay, Motion Below from Melbourne. They're kind of, they're like, I don't know what style you'd say. They're like mel melodic. They've got heavy bits and they've got really cool singing bits. Um, so, yeah, they're really cool. Um, Orpheus Omega. Uh, I think oh. everyone knows Orpheus Omega from Melbourne as well. Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, check them out. Um, ooh, who will go? I'll go... Hmm. There's so many out there. It's hard to yeah. really pick them out, but ones I've been listening to of late. So there's a band called Those Left Behind um, in Adelaide. Uh, they're really, really cool. They're just getting up and going. Uh, and I've been, I've had the privilege of listening to some of their stuff. Um, yeah. So really, really digging that stuff there. Um, what else have I listened to? Listen to all Australian metal bands is basically what we should be saying. Yeah. Oh, is, and Harlot. that's what I recommend. Harlot, yeah, yeah the new listen, track. Listen, Harlot, I'm trying to keep it local, um, but Harlot from Melbourne, Thrash from Melbourne, absolutely amazing. They've got some new stuff on the way, absolutely amazing. Um, and I guess Desecrator as well, some more Thrash. I've been getting into a bit of Thrash. So, yeah, I guess those are my five. Motion Below, Harlot, Desecrator, those left behind. And what did I say? Something else. <laughs> I can't remember. What done well, I Matt. Done well. Yeah, you've done Yeah, You've done yes. well. <laughs> Um, what have I been? Manami's on it too. Triple kill. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Triple kill are great. Um, who have I been listening to? Blunt shovel from Melbourne are fantastic. I really like blunt shovel. I also really like Dr. Colossus from Melbourne. I sort of, I'm come from more of like a stoner sort of that kind of, of metal. Um, like I listen to a lot of Mastodon. So that's where my sort of, my love lies. Um, I, the enemy, speaking of Orpheus, I, the enemy are absolutely phenomenal. And their oh, new yeah. album they, is so they good. I a Spotify thing for me randomly. Like yeah. I was in the shower and it's like, it was some metal playlist and I was like, riffs. Yeah. Riffs, and I was like, wait, riffs. And then it was I, the enemy. Yeah. I, the enemy. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to give two more. I'm going to go with hollow world from Melbourne. Um, great bunch of blokes and really good music. Um, and my last one has to be 12 foot ninja. Cause I love 12 foot Corey, I suppose yours is oh, like you guys are pretty much rattled off what I was going to rattle off, but I'm going to say like, like some of the old school Aussie stuff. Like I know we're trying to keep it local, but they played a gig in Victoria. I'm going to go with buried in Verona. Like, you you got to have buried oh, in Verona yes. in there. Oh my God. And feed it to the sharks. You're going to say as well, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. Feed it to the sharks yep. as well. Man, memories. Yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> old school, old school. Yeah, this is like old school metalcore stuff that I was really like, I still listen to it. I love it. Um, I, did, I got a question here from Knox, which I, he's asked a couple of times, so I want to talk about it. Are you boys going yeah. to put our music on a vinyl? Yeah, I just, I was going through the question. I was going to get to that too. So yeah, mm. go ahead, Corey. I don't know, Matt. Are we putting our music on a vinyl? Knox, um, the intention is to, yes, is to put it on vinyl this time. We figure we didn't do the first record on vinyl um, just because a lot of stuff happened. To get that out there, that first record, there's a lot of stuff that happened even up to the week before we released that record. It just um, wasn't an option so at the, we didn't at really the time. Get a chance to do that. Uh, yeah, exactly. It wasn't an option. But this time we'll definitely be putting it on vinyl. Um, and yeah, it's 100% going to be on vinyl. Um, so yeah, while Corey was doing that, um, have you got any more bands you want to rattle off, Corey? Or... Oh, definitely like Billy Eilish. Um, who else have we got? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go through some of these really, really quick. Um, Tom, Drag is a Beast. Thank you very much. Is a really cool song. Um, our first film clip we ever did. So it holds a special place in our heart. I think Drag was kind of like, I wouldn't say it's like a, a breakthrough song for us, but it was kind of, it's our most listened to song. And it's kind of where we found a little bit more of ourselves on our feet and what kind of people like that melodic slash heavy Absolutely. side of what we do. Um, so a good mix. if you like drag, we're going to like pretty much 70% of the new stuff because drag. Um, uh, what else have we got uh, from Sarah? Do we ever listen to punk? That's my favorite genre. I highly recommend idols and Frank Carlin rattlesnakes. Um, me personally, I don't listen to punk. I wouldn't say that I'm an elitist, but I, punk never really got to me. A lot of people went to, from punk to metal and I never really got the punk part. So for me, no. What about you boys? Um, Corey? I think punk, like maybe like a little bit of like the clash and like maybe a little bit of black flag, but not, not really. I don't really listen to that much punk to be honest. No. I, I went through an anti-flag and Henry Rollins phase when I was in high school, probably year 11 and year 12. Um, but like the new Tony Hawk as well and truly reinvigorated my love for punk because that that whole soundtrack is just completely phenomenal. That's pretty much where I listen to all my punk was basically through the Tony Hawk game, pretty much. I don't play Tony Hawk. I can't skateboard, so. <laughs> You'll learn. Um, James Gill, Corey on the PBR. You I don't know Pabst. what that means. Do you understand You're that? Blue Corey? Ribbon, mate. Uh, no, I'm on the, sorry, it's a little bit of a segue here. I'm on the uh, Mark Original Ottergar Pills, which is a, a beautiful, beautiful German beer import. Um, we sell it, Dan Murphy, it's a good price. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's top drop, it's nice and cheap, makes you feel good, and uh, puts hair on your elbows, it's good. Drink it. Hey, Corey, Kyle Patterson said, share some Dutch. Can you say anything in Dutch? Well, Probably he not. said... Um, Share some Deutsch, which is German. Uh, but thank you, Kyle. Uh, share some Dutch. Oh, okay. Ik ga van jou. Mes porotas si milakrieros. Ochan beginnen eines bens bas paranstolen. There you go. It's like I like to sit. I like to sit in the park and eat mushrooms. <laughs> there you go. There you um, go. Kim Andrews. How you going? What's going on, man? Um, do you think live music, more so metal, is dead in water? Do you think things will pick up locally after post-COVID? Um, That's a great I, question. I never say that the live, I never say that the scene is dead in Warrnambool. That's po That's pre-COVID though. I don't know what this, any scenes are going to be like anywhere post-COVID. I like to think that because of the the lack of music, that there'll be a, res a big resurgence of it. And I've seen that. The gigs that are happening in the other states are selling out for local shows are all selling out so i just yeah i, d I don't know it's hard to say one was such a small town where the metal is dead in it or i mean i don't know it's hard to say we just have to wait and see i like to think that all of this will get everyone out to appreciate what they've lost it's not only the fact that like like I, I want to play our local town so bad. It's just trying to find a venue that will have us. But also, I want bands to recognise Warnable as a fantastic place to come and, and gig at because there's nothing better than bringing bands yeah. here and go, "Oi, come play Warnable. We go hard." But it's just trying to find that venue that does it is is well, once COVID 
once COVID cleans up, we've got to figure out what we're doing. Yeah, I, I and think, then we'll see what, what what options open up. I think the um the the music scene as a uh, whole, not specifically just Warnable, but I think anywhere is going to look vastly different post COVID um, to when it what it does look like now. So you know, there's there's hope. 100%. There's hope. There is. Go um, for it, Matt. Gerard Verhey. That is someone related to you, Corey. That'd be an uncle. Yep. Yeah. G'day. Thanks for joining in. Fiona. What's up, Uncle Jez? Hello. <laughs> Michael Langford. Yes, I know, man. The Departed. Um, we'll talk about The Departed briefly now. So uh, in terms of Australian bands, The Departed uh, and the man himself, Adam B. Metal. So... Uh, I think you said that you found him through something that we did with him uh, or with, that he shared. Um, Adam B. Metal is the frontman, I guess, the all-round creator of The Departed, and he's also a good long-time friend of ours. He's had involvement in every single piece of music we've done, every record, so every EP, everything we've done he's had involvement in uh, in terms of producing, mixing, you name it. He's always been there, so shout-out to Adam B. Metal. He also does live streams too, so he's got his own Facebook page. So mm. check him out. Uh, really and good. if you like Rocket League, he's on Rocket League. Like we play, we made a song for Rocket League. So check out Adam B Metal on all your socials. Um, and shout out to you. He does a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, so there you go. I've mentioned him. <laughs> um, what else have we got here? Yeah, 12 Foot Ninja. Frank and Bock, yes. And speaking of Adam B Metal, so he Frank also used to be the frontman and guitar player for Frank and Bock arguably in their best years. <laughs> um, there's some really cool stuff that he was involved in. Um, skipping hybrid nightmares, not skipping hybrid night. So you guys are on top of this more than we are. So this is great because mm. now we can share it with everyone and everyone else can see it. Um, another fun fact, hybrid nightmares, their front man, Loki, shout out to Loki. He was actually our tour manager over in Japan. and We formed a really great relationship with him then. So Loki, awesome. Check out hybrid nightmares, Loki merch, a great way of touring. Uh, Colton, what's up? I also saw Will. Colton and Will are in the Nuremberg Code from Melbourne, another uh, metal band from Melbourne. Check them out. That's the Nuremberg Code. Hi, Lynn. Um, no worries, Sarah. Yeah. There's a lot of comments here. Our... <laughs> there is a lot. I'm trying to uh, smash through them. Uh, practicing the scales. No. Any love for late Eddie Van Halen? Of course. Yeah. That's not even a question. That's yeah. absolutely... And um, Ray, rest in peace. Absolutely. I um, I um, found out while I was at work. While I was at work, I found out and I told my boss and said, I need a 15 minute break. So I went, sat in my car and blasted Hot the Teacher and blasted Eruption. Just sitting in my car and was just like, Eddie, man. Legend. Hot for Teacher was like um, one of the first lo- songs I ever tried to learn on drums. Um, trying to get that opening bit and only in the last sort of few weeks did I realise that there it's actually just four drum kits layered on top of each other. Um, no wonder I, I can't play it. It's because they're trying to um, sort of replicate that sound of the motorcycle. And the only way to get it without <laughs> actually having a motorbike in the studio was to record like four drum kits. I could get a motorbike in the studio if you want. No. Nah. <laughs> Caleb Roberts, it's been a while, man. <laughs> G'day, how are you, man? It has been a while. Absolutely, good to see you. Warnable does rock. There's a lot of love for Warnable, so that's really, really cool. It means a lot to us. Being from Warnable, um, that means a lot to us. So absolutely, thank you so much, guys. Um, all right, I think we've kind of caught up with comments. So like, keep them coming. We'll go back and absolutely keep yeah going. And yeah, keep, going through keep these questions uh, coming. We've got another yeah, yeah 25 minutes, so keep the questions coming. We're really enjoying it. Now, we've got a couple of topics that we were going to talk about, but you guys have smashed us with so many more questions than we thought about, which is great. Um, so I want to get to some of these topics that we had. So um, being in a band, yeah. So swinging back to it, and we're kind of recapping on being in a band, there's, there's a couple of musicians here. Um, it's, it's tough right now. Uh, I know a couple of friends of mine in Melbourne in bands that haven't seen each other haven't rehearsed for since the, all year basically we've been lucky that in between lockdowns and in between restrictions in regional victoria that we could catch up and do a little bit not as much as we'd like obviously but yeah right now being in a band is really really hard um one topic <laughs> we'll get everyone involved in is the the good the bad and the ugly of being in a touring band um <sighs> there's a, a lot of people that will relate to this 
um, or want to know what it's like. So the good, the bad, and the ugly of touring, kick us off, Corey. <laughs> good. It's my, my hair. Shit, my hair's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there, man. Look yeah, at this. <laughs> yeah. The bad. My friggin' hair <laughs> dealing with this bloody rubbish on the road. Um, good thing about gigs, like, oh, man, like, what's not to love about travelling the country or even now we can say touring internationally with, you know, four of your best mates, five if you've got a string along with you, which shout out to Leroy, um, and just going out, having a great time, experiencing different cultures, experiencing different towns, different venues, different pubs, different clubs, experiencing how, how they run their shows, what they put on the bar, what they put on the tab for the band is always an exciting thing for me. Um, and just all the, all the different styles of bands that you play with as well, because sometimes when we go to the shows, especially in Japan, um, when we were going to do our shows, we had no idea who else was on the bill. Well, we did, but we didn't know what they sounded like. So when we got there, we were just like, Jesus Christ, like what, who is this? This is amazing. Yeah. It was so good. It was and that's in the best way. That's the most exciting thing about, about going to the shows is, oh yeah, we've played with these guys before. They were fucking sick. I will certainly go out of my way to make sure I go and spend time and go and talk to them and, and actually catch them. If I'm not, you know, selling merch or drinking or in the toilet. So Probably some of the cons about touring would be the long time in a car with four or five dudes. That is rough. <laughs> it is a rough, sweaty, smelly, degenerate, and uh, just just degrading time. Uh, when you walk out of the car, you smell like you've walked out of hell. Um, no offense to any of the other fellas. I smell great, but the rest of them just stink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love it. Um, I'm going to swing back to some questions and then we'll get back to um, some uh, Court Braden's opinion on that. So, um, and I'm going to cover this, Fiona, and also Tom. I'm going to cover this at the same time in terms of songwriting topics and themes on the album, um, I guess being the, the vocals and lyric writer as such. Um, so, this one is. And I think every band kind of says this, that's like, this is the deepest, this is the most personal record. Um, but for me personally, in terms of lyrics, um, I've deliberately trying to focus a bit more on getting them to the next level. So, you know, we, we're undoubtedly taking the riffs, the guitar playing, the drumming, we're undoubtedly taking the music to the next level without a, without a question. What we're doing compared to Awaken Within is like, yeah. I, I can't even play the songs. I can't play them. I, yeah, I know I'm writing riffs that I'm like, I can't play them, you know? Well, obviously I can't can play them, but you know, I need to actually work to play these riffs and keep on top of them. So for me, and the music has always been easy because um, I've been a guitar player first for all, you know, half my life. And I've only been a vocalist for five years now. So in terms of topics, I'm trying to take it to the next level. So I'm actually uh, really looking, I guess, into things that I can relate to. So things that I've gone through, um, and trying to put a bit more passion, a bit more, a bit more, you know, a bit more of everything into the lyrics. So in terms of topics, you know, Shadow Walker is about, I guess, yeah, being there alone in around nothingness and just clawing your way through. Um, anima Mia is actually means um, soul. So Anima Mia is Latin for soul. So that song is about the strength of the soul and, and your internal self. Uh, and I won't give away too much about some of the other songs, but they're about things that you're going to be you're going to be able to relate to them basically you're going to be able to relate to a lot of this other stuff um more than you would be able to relate to awaken because as you said ancient beings and things like that so our kind of th uh theme has been around that kind of yeah ancient beings a lot of people say a lot, a lot about fire because i wrote a lot about fire on awaken within so <laughs> the, the fire album so this one's not the water album like in hearts wake did the earth fire water thing um but this is a lot more relatable in terms of themes. So it's not out there. It's real shit, I guess. It's like grounded. this thing, real shit. Which is um, good because it just opens it up to everybody then. Because absolutely, if you can understand the lyrics, then hopefully it'll vibe with you. 
Because I don't even know what the lyrics are. And that, and, that clean, and that is with the melody as well. Because as we're talking about drag setting the stones for the melodic side of the band moving forward, there's a lot more melodic stuff, a lot more yeah. choruses that you can catch on to. So if you can relate to them, you're going to be able to catch on to them a lot more. So we're really focusing and making sure that you can latch onto it, you can relate to it, and you can sing it and actually feel it like I do when I sing it. Um, so thank you for the question. Um, it's really cool to be able to talk yeah. about that stuff. Um, that you know, you you put all your effort into it, especially from vocal and theme wise, that you don't really get to talk about it. So thank you. I play bass. Um, huh? <laughs> I, oh, yeah, play bass. Plays bass. I play bass. I play bass. You don't just play bass. Um, fun fact: Braden doesn't just play bass. He is an integral part of the songwriting process. Um, he's a multi-talented man. He can play bass, guitar, and drums. There are in each record. We've only done one, and we're doing this next one. There is a song that Braden has pretty much solely written in terms of guitar and bass. Uh, and had a heavy input in drums, so same thing's happening again. So, well, as you can probably Sarah, guess by now, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I sh- sorry, I just have to put in my two cents because I don't otherwise. I'm just in the Corey's band because the band. of my hair. <laughs> Let's be honest. He's in the band. He's the icon. Um, yeah. Okay. What do you think about the UK government suggestions that music and arts industry is unviable and that artists should retrain for a new profession? Um, I didn't know that that's a thing. Uh, Brexit that was that the worst thing they ever did. I think that your what you've written there um, um, can fuck right off. I don't know who that is, Tories, but that They're is a political bullshit. party. The arts. Okay, right. So the music and arts industry is integral to. It's 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 a part of life. It's been going on since mankind, and it needs to continue on. People need that outlet, and I'm not going to talk about this because it's a political kind of thing, and I'm not going to talk about it too much. But we need the arts. Everyone knows it. They just don't see it. We need the arts. That's silly. Um, I think that we're having the same problem here as well. Like with with everything yep. that's happened, um, music venues were the first to shut and they will be the last to open simply because of, of the crowd um, and the way that an audience interacts with um, with the performers, which is so unfortunate. Um, and we're, we're a bit fortunate in that the Victorian government are currently throwing some money to... Uh, to um, to live music venues to try and keep them afloat but we just yeah we don't know so i think much like teachers at the moment i think once we get back into it is that you know you'll be appreciated for the work that artists put in and how much they contribute oh imagine it just imagine it boys <laughs> um cory i do not and manami i do not smell the worst post show and if i do it's because i will because I work the hardest if I do. Oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to do two jobs. I've oh, got to here sing we and go. play guitar. That's two oh, people. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's set up a mic stand for Matt because he doesn't know how to work one. Hey, all right. That's enough there. <laughs> um, oh, what else we got here? Um, my all time favorite is The Descent. Knox, thank you so much. Um, Great song. It is definitely top three tracks. I guess in terms of popularity, it's actually the second most listened to track that we have. It will re- be on the set list for a long time to come. So I don't see it going anywhere. Tom, the hair, I know you're probably talking about mine. He's so talking about you. Corey's. No, uh, no, let's not give it to Corey. All right. Um, Dave Martin, I'm offended by your hair, Corey. We're all offended by it. Life- no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me interject there. Dave, <laughs> if I could, I would have what you have, but I'm not man enough to have what you have. All right, we need to know what you've got. Um, (laughs) So, uh, Dave, yeah, we've been... uh, Tom, live stream performance. I Mm. don't know. We... I'll I'll just put it out there. I want to. I want to. We'll see what we can do, whether it be a live stream. Maybe we'll do some guitar stuff and maybe I'll show some new songs um, on the guitar live, maybe. We'll see what we can do. Um, So This seems to have gone a lot, lot better than we thought, so it's now definitely in the realm of possibility. Um, Daniel Smith, what's up, man? More Meshuggah elements on the new album? Uh, no. Uh, shout out to Daniel Smith. <laughs> yes. And uh, also Bo Riley, two of our good friends. They have travelled in a car with us, and uh, not with us, but they also drove up to our Sydney shows. So they have driven from Warnwood, Sydney, and back in a weekend with us. So shout out to those blokes. Um, Manami, question for myself. What was the toughest process of getting your growls up to scratch? What methods did you use to balance the Vox guitars at the level of Matt Heafy? Um, firstly, if 
you believe that I'm at the same level or balance or whatever it might be. If there's a compliment in there, thank you. Um, he is definitely my inspiration to be a singer guitar player and the way that I learned. The toughest process of getting my growls and screams up to scratch. A uh, lot of vodka. For me, it's the highs. <laughs> my high screams have been something that's been the toughest to get to uh, a level where I'm happy with uh, and get them consistent. Um, it's just practice. And the toughest process was just is just the practice that it takes, the physical stress you put on your body at that or those early stages of learning to get it right. Um, so the toughest process is, yeah, is, is, is the practice, I guess, of it. The rest of it, once you've got technique down and you know what you need to do, that's, that's I guess that's the hardest part, knowing what you need to do. From there, it's just practice. And that's the same as anything. Um, the method I use to balance it out, um, to balance out the vocals guitar at the level of my hefe, uh, do you mean in terms of uh, like how I incorporate them in the songs? Um, yeah, maybe... If you can clarify that a little bit, that would be great. Um, thanks for such a lengthy answer, Sarah. No worries. I didn't know Corey could sing until I heard Dying in Your Arms cover and <laughs> Drag Me to Hell was pretty blown away. He can sing and we are using it, I would say, 50% more on this record. <laughs> See, it's, it's it's so nice to, to hear that because as, like, you're always going to be your own toughest critic. I still don't think that I am can sing. I'm a good singer, anything like that. I just ah, ah, into a mic. And I mean, auto tune is a wonderful thing. Don't ever, don't ever underestimate auto tune, but, um, but thank you, Tom. That's, that's really sweet of you. Obviously you heard me raw, um, acoustically. I remember that night. Um, thanks dude. That like, that means a lot to actually someone say that you can sing. Cause, uh, I personally don't think that I'm, I'm that, that, bad but i'm not that good you know whatever no, I, I honestly i don't hold myself very high in the singing category but thank you so much it's nice that um that you like it i appreciate it thank you um i'm just going to quickly cycle back to manami if you're talking about the technique of doing the guitar and the singing at the same time um it's a hundred percent down to i and i don't know how everyone does this but when i'm doing it and when i'm on stage i only think about the vocals i do not think about the guitar so the balancing the technique is make sure that you can play that guitar and that riff like the back of your hand because you don't have you don't think about the guitar you think about the vocals um, and i guess for me i have the advantage of i'm writing the riffs so uh, what i write is within my ability so then it's not hard to have to worry about doing that. It's a matter of just doing the vocals over it. And yeah, there's some challenging parts where I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to, how many times boys do I come in and go, nah, can't do it. I can't sing and play that song. I can't sing over this riff. Every song. It just comes down to practice. Yeah, every song. Yeah. every song. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lee Chatterton. What's up, man? Good to see you. Um, Kyle, being a metal band, is it just metal bands you draw inspiration from or are there other genres slash bands? No. Good question. No. Really good question. We, because we, all of us, you know, we, even though we recommended Australian metal bands, all of us listen to different music. I listen, it's going to sound weird, but I listen to a lot of classical, um, shout out to Ludovic, Joe and Audi. Um, but I listen to a lot of classical. I listen to a lot of neoclassical. I listen to a lot of um, acoustic stuff. Um, and I draw inspiration for that because it's very melodic based and melodies is my my number one thing i love harmonies and melodies so like piano with their harmonies is just muy bueno um and we all listen to different stuff so i take my inspiration not just from listening to you know Wah! slayer or anything like that i uh, i will listen to a pop song and go oh that is why it's catchy because that melody in that chorus is that's like oh yeah that makes me want to move that makes me want to dance how can i make that metal is how i look at it I think that's really good because for me personally, I only take inspiration from metal. I'll just be honest. I pick up a guitar and I play metal. When I take my inspiration, it's about metal because that's what I'm trying to write. But linking into that, that's why it works well for us because we've got uh, everyone else and these two boys, and I know Braden will have a lot to say on this particular part, is that they don't, um, they take inspiration from other bits. So bits where uh, I might be, you know, just going full metal and then these boys will be like, no, well, what about this, this, and this, and add that non-metal element that kind of makes it. And I'll brain will lead into this a bit more. Um, yeah, so I'm... As far as the songwriting process goes, I try and draw from as many different inspirations as possible. Um, for me, it is almost less about the heavy side of it and more about making a cohesive thing. Um, 
I'm very much about the resolution of a riff. Um, and as Corey mentioned, you get a lot of resolution from the likes of classical music, and it's all all chord progression and whatnot. And I'm not very good with my theory, but for me, it, it's very much grounded in that. And um, you're yeah. not good with theory, mate. I'm... What's the scale? Yeah, off topic. Matt is terrible at music theory. Am, but go yeah, ahead. I'm go the ahead, worst at music theory. I cannot work out a harmony. But I know what it is. I can work it out, but I don't know what that is. I don't know anything about scales. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you anything about musical theory. I can just do stuff that sounds okay, but I know nothing about theory. So there you go. You don't need to know theory to write the ascended. So <laughs> <laughs> says a lot about our music. <laughs> a lot about us. You don't need to write. Uh, and yeah. if you me, you don't even know how to play. You don't even need to know how to play it. <laughs> um, you do a live do you want to keep talking about that? No, um, I'm, stuff you? I'm pretty happy. Like, you know, I, I try to listen to as many different genres as possible. Um, like at, uh, at the time where we were sort of doing the, um, the Shadow Walker and Anima Mia, I was listening to a lot of mariachi music and gee, they are so good at being able to resolve into the next part so smoothly. And that was a big focus for me was making sure we had that ability to smooth things over. Yeah, and, and that's that's I guess the biggest key um, and the biggest one of the biggest things when you talk about that word resolve, and that's where I struggle the most with writing is that I can write a bunch of riffs, but making the resolve and work together. And Braden is fantastic at that. And you know, ninety percent of the stuff in terms of resolving, I always go to him for that. So there's a lot of elements and a lot of things that will be like that. Braden will come up with that is not metal. Well, uh, gets inspired I suppose it's a good question to answer is is how do we write a song? Like, how do oh, we we'll do it? We'll come back to that. There's a question here. Um, Kim, have you recently heard Matt on Twitch? Personally think he's losing his screams. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I have seen him a lot on Twitch. Ooh. He, he's not... It's hard. So, and I'm, I'm not going to speak ill of a, another musician for one and one of my inspirations, but his screaming technique has changed. So he went through some vocal issues and he had to change the way his technique is done. And so now he sounds different. In the studio... He's trying to go back to his old way. And he did come out and say that he essentially hurt his voice in the studio to make the as much as what we knew him to be. But live, completely different technique. So when he's doing his yeah. streams and stuff, yeah, it's a completely different, man. It's simply because of doing it for so long. So he's had to change technique for longevity. Um, and, al man, and also, like, sorry, from what I've noticed when I watched his live streams, he actually uses a lack of a lack technique when he's doing his live streams because he's not trying to perform. He's not trying to record. Exactly. He's just exactly. trying to get it done to show you, hey, look, I can play, I'm doing it, and I'm, I want you guys to enjoy it. You all know how the song goes. I'm just screaming, you know? Yeah, exactly right. He's not going to scream his guts out on a live stream. Nah. Um, look at some of their live stuff of, of late. Um, that He's still got it, but it's no doubt it is different. Um, I mean, in five years' time, for all I know, I won't have a voice to be able to do this, so we'll see. Um what else have we got here? We've got a lot of stuff to go over. Um, did I watch the South Park pandemic? Have not done that. I don't know about the other boys. I'm just no. going to quickly fly through some of this stuff. No, sorry. Hello, Doris. Love you too. Oh, uh, hey, Doris. Mwah, big kiss to Doris. We listen to a lot of funk lately. It sounds weird, but yeah, look, man, Tom, I listen to a lot of Ed Sheeran lately. I bloody love Ed Sheeran. So, man, I'm with you there. Corey's still strictly on Tally Ho Reds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, so Kim, yeah, he changed his technique on purpose, man. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there about what he went through, but essentially they had to cancel a gig. Uh, I think, uh, I think yeah, they actually had to cancel a gig. They, uh, he technically, and you know how musicians say they've blown out their voice. He blew his voice out in the, the technical term. How, and, you know, I don't know if he had surgery or whatnot, but he definitely blew his voice out, leading him to have to change technique. And that's why Silence in the Snow has very little screaming because he was in the recovery period. I suppose, yeah. like, seeing Randy from Lamb of God, you know, sort of have so much damage to his voice done probably, was probably a big eye-opener. Um, yeah, absolutely. And on that, Lamb of God's new album is amazing. Go and listen to it oh, if you haven't. It's so good. Is, Randy's back. He's still got it. He's back. Randy is back. Um, so we've got five minutes to go, guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. If there's any last questions, we'll answer a couple more. Yeah. Oh, Spitfire. Seagull. Bro. Seagull, love you, man. I hope to see you soon, brother. I really hope to see you um, soon. So how do we write a song, Matt? 
How do we write a song? Okay. Um, for us, songwriting begins with myself um, and I smash out a heap of riffs um, and just yeah, do that, get riffs going. And look, sometimes a song flows, sometimes it's just a riff and a bunch of riffs. So what I do is start with the riffs, distribute them to everyone. And then everyone has a listen and then we get in the room. So it all starts with the guitar. And I do that, get a, get a few riffs. Then we all get in a room together and we go through what we think is good, what's gonna make the cut. And then of late, I'll get back on the guitar and we'll redo them as a group, record them um, with everyone's input. And then comes down to, yeah, the drums then at that point. So then Jake will get in, do his bit. Um, for us, the way we work and utilize it, and a lot of bands are the same now, so we're not afraid to say it. We program the drums while we're demoing um, just because we get an idea of what's going on. So we can do it all in one room, all four guys in a room where we can make the whole song. So, And I think on the programming drums as well, like it's it's just such a cost-effective way of doing it. Um, because we get in there and once we hit studio, we know exactly what we're playing. Like the songs are completely written um, and there's yeah. minimal minimal amount that we need to do sort of production inside the studio. Because That's yeah, what I do we, like when we when we're writing our songs, like we we spend weeks and weeks and weeks of catching up twice a week, sometimes more, sometimes less, but mostly more. We catch up in the one room and we will just play play what we've written well you know what what we've all put our contributions in contributions in and um and basically go ah, that needs tweaking we need to change that and good thing is we have a guitar on the fly so we can actually adjust that right there and there and then we go okay that's good that's good right we're happy with this good all right let's go to the studio bang lay it out it's clean none of this trying to work it out while we're in the studio we, we, we've got it sorted before we get to the studio uh, the benefit of the program drums while we're demoing is don't like that beat, change that beat, change that. So that's basically how the song comes together. Vocals are written by myself in complete confidence at the last, like, by, no, and I come into the studio and sometimes finish them in the studio. I'm going to quickly finish up with some of these questions. Um, are we playing Download Festival when it's on? I want to see us on the main stage the too. Dream. So hopefully. Um, chatters, do we still use the more mini effect jazz wizard things? Yes, we do. I uh, don't. So, um, Love them. Corey and myself, uh, we use what's called a more G200, I believe, yeah. Yeah. is the unit. So we used to use Axe Effects and the likes, but these more units are about 30 centimetres big and they weigh 1.1 kilos. So it means we can tour with them anywhere in the world and literally take them on our backs and have the same sound no matter where we go. So yes, we still use those. I'm using, yeah. um, what am I using? I'm using a Mark Bass Little Mark Three, I think it is, um, but I'm just gradually moving away from that sort of stuff. And at the moment, I, um, I'm i using a Dark Glass X7 microtubes for most of my nice. video compression. If you and are listening, it's endorsing. It's so good. Yeah, please, Dark Glass. <laughs> it's so good. Cool. I love your products. <laughs> you know, quickly, yeah. So Tom Studio guitars. Um, so all the guitars are recorded on the one guitar. Um, well, predominantly, which is a, a old uh, uh, a LCD Eclipse that I've got with a original Simodungan blackout, 10 to 52 strings. That has pretty much done everything that we've ever done across the five year of our career. That guitar records everything because uh, it just sounds amazing. In terms of studio guitars, in the studio, we don't use amps. We uh, use plugins, reamping, the days of recording on an amp. It's just easier for us to just track it and then like we just talk about how we write songs, we can then sit back and literally with Adam and in, uh, in the studio in, and with the producer and mixer, and we can just go, mm, add more of this in the tone, do this, this, and this, and we can yeah. tweak it to whatever extent we want. If we were to record live on a cab or an amp or whatever it might be, we're kind of set in the stone of how it is. So we use plugins and re It works for some oh, and yeah. it works it, it, and it doesn't for others. We, that's been, just how we do it. I've been using a Dingwall Combustion 4-string for all the stuff on the new record. Did, it, did I ever use the 5-string? No. And I use a, no. um, a Dingwall 5-string and then G2, one of the Nolly ones, um, for live. And you did use the Gibson... Yes, in, on um, Awaken Within, I used um, a Gibson Explorer four-string bass, and boy, does it roar. That thing roars. All right, last question I'm going to answer. What do you guys think of ACDC's new track? I think they've toned down Brian's voice right down, and it sucks, but the song is good. Um, I listened to it yesterday. It's ACDC. Yeah. It's... They've been doing the same thing for 40 years, and it's good. Like, 
It's good because it's ACDC. In terms of the vocals, I honestly didn't notice if they turned it down or if they'd limited him back, but it wouldn't surprise me after everything that we know he's been through. Yeah, like the, the whole not being able to hear anything thing would probably <laughs> definitely take a, uh, a toll on one's voice. Um, but look, it's it's good to hear from them again, especially after the passing of Malcolm. Um, and I know that they wouldn't do it unless they had him in the for, in the in their forethoughts. And speaking of good to hear him doing again, Metallica will be doing something soon. Fingers crossed. Little inside bet. <laughs> oh, the Unforgiven Forty Six. I can't wait. <laughs> Get a hair. Uh, Ryan Matheson, the man himself. From the motion below, get a haircut, Matthew. I will not do so. I'm just working on it. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, which guitar plugins do we recommend? Um, at the moment, we're just using when we demo what's inside Studio One. Uh, I can't 100%. We've run, been I using the um, the like yeah the the nameless plugin, the FTS ones, haven't we? Yeah, there's a mixing magic. Mate, I can't, I can't 100% <laughs> tell you. Um, next live Q&A, look, at this rate, might even be next week. Yeah, we'll sort this something rate, out. I'd love to. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll have, we'll sort something out soon. If you guys really liked us, uh, and like this, rather, and I know you don't like us, if you like this live stream format, um, yeah, we'll definitely do it again. Um, thank you so much. We're going to wrap up here um, and kind of, yeah, shut it down. So thank you so much for being a part of this first one. Um, it's so good to be connected with you and see so many of you guys popping in and out. It means the world to us. Uh, we'll probably put this up on YouTube at some point, uh, maybe. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank it's you, everyone, who tuned in. Thank you so much. Thanks, team. We love you. Yeah, stay safe.